Welcome. Let's understand. There are graph questions in your AP macroeconomics as well as microeconomics every time and why correctly labeled graphs are important. The three basic fundamental things based on which you score the number for a correctly labeled graph. For example, you are asked to have a graph of aggregate demand and aggregate supply model, right? In that case, what would happen? You are asked to draw the current price levels as PL1 and the output level as Y1. <clears throat> okay, how would you draw this? So there are three important elements. We call it as ACE method. A is the axis. So what is the axis? We have price level. Against the price level, there is real GDP. So real GDP on the X axis, price level on the Y axis. The marking for this is important. Then the next marking, since it's an aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve, we have the curve for aggregate demand. Also, we draw a curve for aggregate supply. But note, we cannot write aggregate supply. We have to write short run aggregate supply. Okay, the equilibrium point is again important. So under the ACE method, A is for the axis, which we have drawn as X and Y. C is for the curves, which is the aggregate supply and the aggregate demand. And E is for the equilibrium point. Now this equilibrium point, as it was asked in the question, you have to mark PL1 for the price level and Y1 for the output level. Now note, in the same graph, if you are asked to include the aggregate supply or the long run, supply okay so this would be the line for the note my line is not going straight so this is the long run aggregate supply and this would be the point of full employment this full employment would coincide with your current output which is y1 and this real output is again uh, real gdp is also the quantity or the output here now <clears throat> what is important is my full employment is also known as the potential output right or it is also called as the natural rate of unemployment what does that mean it does not mean that when they, we talk about full employment there is no unemployment there is always the component of unemployment the frictional and the seasonal which is part of it but this is the natural rate it's not the actual unemployment which is in the market now what would happen in the case of a recessionary and an inflationary cycle Recessionary cycle, my long run aggregate supply would be towards the right of it. And here, this would be my full employment. So my actual rate of output would be less than the full employment. Or I can say my actual rate of unemployment is greater than the natural rate of unemployment. Okay. And that is the case of recession. The other case is an expansionary cycle. So under an expansionary cycle, my actual rate of unemployment would be less than the natural rate of unemployment. And that's again the case of an expansionary cycle. So based on what is asked in the question, the correct labeling becomes important. So even if you are asked to mark the full employment levels, if you have a L L LRAS on the right, you would have the full employment here. If it is on the left, you would mark the full employment here. You would mark your current output level at the equilibrium point, which is here. And this would be the shift that has to be explained. So a correctly labeled diagram following the ACE method becomes important, which is marking the axis, marking the curves and mentioning the equilibrium point while you are drawing your graphs in micro and macro.